So that's one of the aspects which I mentioned of Stuart Close about the explosion. Now we come to another important aspect after discussing on the types of suppression, artificial suppression, natural suppression. I shared with you how the pathology progresses. It's important to understand that when you are treating, again I'm sharing with you um, from Stuart Close, that when you are treating just the manifestation, not addressing the person, you're not addressing the immune system, not addressing the constitution, you're only treating the external manifestations. Sometimes you have to understand what is, as a homeopath, the relation between cause and effect. You have to understand the etiological factors, otherwise you'll only be dwelling into pal palliation and you won't be curing the patient. So that's very, very important to, to understand. So what we should look forward to? So what's our aim, especially as a homeopath? You have to understand there are a few factors here again. I'm sharing this with you again from H.A. Roberts. Only thing we should always bear in mind, I'm reading this from H.A. Roberts. We should hold our aim is to allow the vital force to express itself in its own chosen way when it is deranged. When vital energy is deranged, it should express in their own chosen way. It is only when it shows itself clearly without interruption in its natural development that we can get a clear picture of the disease state. So you should allow the manifestation of your immune system, allow the manifestation of your vital energy. Suppressing one symptom after the another, sometimes what happens, there is no expression of the true condition of the patient. When you suppress one symptom after the another, you won't get the true manifestation of the patient, which is very unfortunate in today's world. No greater crime can be committed against the human economy than these suppressions. The direct cause of many constitutional diseases. Honeyman says that whenever there has been so much suppression, so much abuse of conventional medicine is one of the most incurable states which you can encounter and it's more difficult to treat those in, in the modern day world, unfortunately. Now, if you consider how can as we homeopaths help in such cases, which is very important as a homeopath, if you consider the treatment, especially for natural suppression, you have to treat the exciting cause, you have to treat the manifestation. You have to look at the correlation, the anamnesis between cause and effect, disappointment of love, humiliation, suppressed sexual desire. What is the manifestation? So you treat the cause, you treat the effect, exciting cause as well as the manifestation. But especially in acutes, patient got over sweaty, came back, sweat got suppressed, gets a cold, you're giving a briny, you're giving an aconite. But remember, as a homeopath, you have to treat the constitutional state. Whenever the acute state has subsided, treat it with a constitutional remedy so that you won't get a recurrence from a slighter cause later on. So whenever you are handling acute state, treat it with an acute remedy. But once the acute state has subsided, always ask the patient to come back, give a constitutional remedy so that there is no recurrence from a slighter cause, especially for cases of natural suppression. Now, with artificial suppression, you have to understand there are two factors here. Many times when the patient is coming to you with lots of conventional medicines, I will share with you in another one of my sessions, the use of organopathics, the use of lesser known organopathic remedies, how to wean off the conventional medicine. So that's also important. I'll be, it's a very big topic and I'll be sharing with you soon that aspect. But also SPDA mentions a very simpler approach to understand cases of artificial suppression. You prescribe a constitutional remedy. Once you prescribe the constitutional remedy, if it's a correct medicine, the suppressed state will come back. So patient is not taking any conventional medicine now. But you prescribe a constitutional remedy, you tell you, my, oh, I had the skin ailment 20 years back, it came back. Do not do anything. Keep your dirty hands off the patient. Wait and watch. Gradually what happens, the patient's suppressed symptoms which come back will gradually go away on its own but patient will generally feel better if it stays repeat the same medicine in a higher potency in the same potency or in a higher potency but still it doesn't help you go to a fresh case taking prescribe a new medicine so two aspects here for artificial suppression a for patients who are still on conventional medicines when they're coming to you i'll be sharing with you later on how to use organopathics to wean off the conventional medicine B, patients have withdrawn conventional medicine, but you have, they have had a lot of suppression by abuse of conventional medicine. You 
prescribe a constitutional remedy the suppressed state comes back may not in the same form it may come back through the same organ but in a different form but when it comes back it will gradually go in its own so wait and watch during that period of time but as as time progresses patient will feel better if it stays use the same remedy in the same or a higher potency it doesn't go away fresh case taking has to be done in such cases and lastly you have to understand again that and i have asked this i have been asked this question very few, many times that can homeopathic remedies cause suppression so can homeopathy cause suppression it's a very tricky question my friends but you have to understand i will say there's a yes and there's a no to it why there is a no to it a because if you are prescribing the remedy in minimum doses you prescribe one single poppy poppy seed as i mentioned in my discussion on dispensing of homeopathic remedies and you're dispensing it in water there is hardly any chances of aggravation even if you are prescribing the incorrect remedy a there is hardly any chances of aggra aggravation and there is hardly any chances of suppression if you are prescribing even the incorrect medicine but you are prescribing it a minimum dose you are dispensing it in water you are prescribing one single poppy seed globule you will hardly find aggravation or suppression even with the incorrect medicine so that part the answer is no to it but there is also yes to it as well two aspects why there is an yes to it i will refer to kent's philosophy again if you haven't read uh, kent's philosophy the last chapter on second prescription you will find that euphrasia is related with the eye symptoms and pulsatilla to the stomach symptoms so you are you are a very busy prescriber you are prescribing euphrasia one time for the eye next time he comes back you are pres prescribing pulsatilla for the stomach but you are not prescribing for his generals remember there is one antisodic that is more similar to the whole patient than these special remedies because it is better fitted to the generals the oftener you prescribe for different group of symptoms the worse it is for your patient because it tends to revert the constitutional state upon the patient and make him incurable so whenever you are prescribing my friends do always prescribe for the constitutional state spend some time on the case taking just the headache you don't prescribe on that just the stomach pains don't prescribe on that but prescribe for the person so that you prescribe a constitutional remedy which will cover his entire immune system the more you prescribe for special features the more you prescribe for different group of symptoms it only drives the disease inward and inward it's you're just doing palliation temporary relief and not the actual cure and it will gradually make him incurable so prescribing for special group of symptoms instead of the constitutional state will result in suppression in many cases a b also i'm referring to again philosophy again we go back and we'll finish with hanuman section 276 of the organon you'll find many homeopaths across the globe unfortunately they prescribe multiple doses 10 doses 12 doses every day to take one dose in c scale they prescribing few drops of the medicine i've shared with you in my discussion on dispensing of remedies that those are really large doses continued doses or drops are really large doses in c scale and 276 only confirms that the more harm the larger the dose and the magnitude of the dose it does more harm the greater its homeopathicity and higher the potency so one am you are prescribing two drops to take every day for one month it's very unfortunate 200 c you are prescribing one drop every day for 15 days again more harm the greater the homeopathicity and larger the dose so even if you are prescribing the correct medicine what happens this is a natural disease you are prescribing a uh, sulfur 200 every day one drop for 15 days sulfur 200c what happens it will go to the same state it will affect the same organs the most suffering the most irritated state and the artificial medicinal disease will remove the natural disease but what happens this artificial medicinal disease is here to stay because you are prescribed in a large dose you are prescribed in a repeated dose this artificial medicinal disease stays if it was prescribed in a minimum dose if it prescribed dispensed in water if it prescribed in a single potency if it prescribed poppy seed globules this artificial medicinal disease would have gone away on its own and the patient's natural health would have returned but when you are prescribing in a large dose massive dose again this words of hanuman more harm the larger the dose and the magnitude of the dose 
you are removing the natural disease because it affects the same parts, it affects the same irritated and suffering parts. But what happens? The artificial disease stays back. I am reading again from 276, no longer suffers from the original disease for that has been homeopathically eradicated. The natural disease is gone because it affects the same organs. But the artificial medicinal disease stays, but he suffers all the more from the excessive medicinal disease and the useless exhaustion of his strength. So he becomes more weak and the medicinal disease will stay back and ultimately you feel the patient is not cured because the natural disease is gone but the artificial disease stays. And that's one of the unfortunate aspects where homeopathy can cause suppression. You are prescribing in a large dose, you are prescribing in repeated doses, even if you are prescribing the correct remedy. So always remember to go for a minimum dose with globules, not with drops, and always dispense in water. That's way you can avoid homeopathic suppression, even if you are prescribing or prescribe the incorrect remedy in many cases. So I've tried to share with you many aspects of suppression here. I've tried to share with you how conventional medicines can cause suppression, how homeopathy unfortunately can sub cause suppression as well. How in modern day world we are <coughs> unfortunately all victims of suppression because you know day in day out it's a very impatient world. 21st century people are always moving for in a fast life. People always need quick results. But unfortunately, in that quest for quick, quick results, we are destroying ourselves. We are reducing our lifespan. If you see people who have survived 80 years, 90 years, if you look at the life history, did they take painkillers? Very less or none because they were not suppressing the danger signals of pain. Did they get any surgeries? Less or none because you're only treating the end products. You're not treating his immune system. You're not treating his diathesis. You're not treating his tendency. You remove his tonsils, comes back the adenoids. You remove his adenoids, comes back the parotid glands. So again, those are forms of artificial suppression. Also, commonly in today's world, topical ointments. You remove a fungal infection, comes back with eczema. Remove that eczema, comes back with psoriasis. Remove that, comes back with malignant melanoma. So, unfortunately, the disease is only going deeper and deeper and deeper. Either in the same organ, it becoming incurable or goes to a very important vital organ in, in today's world. So, look back at your life, look back at your near and dear ones and see that so many forms of suppression is ultimately the result of fatality in many, many, many cases. And I made this session not only for homeopaths, but the common people who believe in homeopathy, who love homeopathy. And unfortunately, this is one of the truths in today's world which should be addressed and homeopathy or any other natural system of medicine has an answer to it. Thank you very much. Long live Hanuman. Long live homeopathy.